Okay, here we are previewing our next sale, which is on Sunday, November the 5th. Previews two days prior. Friday and Saturday from noon to 6 p.m. Don't miss it, it's a great sale. We are loaded. We have lots of mid-century. We're gonna start here with this, a very rare desk. George Nelson, tin edge desk. Slightly as is, but quite a rare desk. This is estimated 1,015, came from a forest. Hills and Queens estate. Below it, you'll see <clears throat> one of many carpets. This is a nice open field, uh, sorry, center medallion. Excuse me, it's a Saruk. We have a few Saruks. We have a Farahan Saruk and some other carpets inside. Over here, we have a wonderful pair of chairs. Look at the leather in these. Very soft, very soft white leather. They're swivel. Contemporary, but they're by a company called Joya, probably about 20 years old, reupholstered. Wonderful pair of chairs. Also in the sale, in the seating vein, we have a pair of these leather Chesterfield sofas. Nice to have two of them. They're in good shape. Doesn't need be any problems in the pinning. Just lost the microphone there, Steve. We'll pick it up. Anyway, moving over here. Right here in the sale, this is, you know, in the manner of Linky. If it's not Linky, we couldn't find a signature, but it could possibly be wonderful parquetry inlays and bronze work. And on top of that, a nice teaser. This is coming up on our December sale. This is an extremely rare Tiffany lamp. Look at this, probably over three foot high. Mosaic, bronze, bejeweling and bejapers. We have three of these shades that hang, that come with it. These are being sold differently, but this lamp, this is the actual lamp in the Tiffany book. I believe there's only two of them ever made. So that lamp is coming up estimated 80 to $120,000 in our December sale. Anyway, back to this month. We're going to go over here. We have this wonderful sort of Italian style commode. Nice inlays on it, nice thick uh, veneers. This is a uh, reproduction of an Italian commode atop of it, a beautiful and very heavy duty malachite inkwell with the lamp. The lamp is slightly is. At the back of it, this lamp is called a raindrop lamp and it's by Curtis Jerry, signed and dated, I believe from about 68. Nice style lamp. Alongside him, a nice big large pair of lacquered and paint decorator, chinoiserie decorated urns. Before we move into the main room, we just catch this little bronze here. I believe it's by a, Mex a Mexican artist called Juarez. Beautifully executed. This came from, uh, I believe, Teaneck, no, not Teaneck, New Jersey, but in New Jersey. Okay, into the main room. As you can see, we have a paella of merchandise here this time. Loads and loads of it. We've got Majolica urns on pedestals. We have alabaster and bronze mounted beautiful pedestals. For the Asian section, we have a lot of jade. We have malachite items. We have this wonderful pair of ruby glass and Chinoiserie decorated. This is a very interesting set of bronze and uh, jasper mounted or wedgewood mounted little writing set. We've a lot of bronzes in the sale. Check out our website, clarkny.com, Clark with a knee to get them. We have this three piece gilt bronze garniture set. A lot of glassware, lots of baccarat, lots of stew bend. This is an interesting pair of lamps. They were obviously lamps at one stage, but they've been the screws into the top of them so you can have them either way, but probably 19th century, magnificent quality. Haven't seen a pair like that before. We've more malachite, more bronzes, a Royal Ducks Indian. He's not too happy looking Indian. He must've lost his fish. Moving right over here of note, I'm just trying to slide the window. We have this wonderful pair of bronze and cut glass uh, tazas or garnitures. Really super quality. More bronzes down there. We've got Quimper. We've got clocks. Now we're gonna run the room and we're gonna catch it as we move along. We have stickly style furniture. We have a lot of Holly Hunt furniture in this sale from a local Scarsdale estate. Of note, this nice leather top, three drawer desk. It was mid-century there, 50s mid-century. We have a lot of nice contemporary carpets also from the home at the Holly Hunt. We've got Florence Knoll sofas. We have this wonderful, you don't usually see them in this size, you usually see coffee table size, but we have this wonderful dining room table, like a tree trunk. And these here, we have a set of eight of these. These are Holly Hunt, a set of eight of these chairs. More mid-century. Commode here. Moving to the center here, you'll see we've got a wonderful carpet. Keep your eye as we're moving along with the video. You'll notice on the floor, we've got a beautiful mid-century sectional sofa there. Marble top table. Catch this abstract bronze here. 
This, I believe, is by a guy called Watson, New Zealand artist, maybe. Nice big size. Fort Lee, that's the estate I was thinking of. I came from Fort Lee. And here, I love this type of stuff from my old Brimfield days, my old picking days, but this is a wonderful, un rare to catch it in this size. I believe it's a model number 715. Coffee grinder, so any of you groovy coffee shops should be looking out of this. Moving right along, we got beautiful mahogany secretary bookcase there. Holly Hunt sofa. We have grandmother clocks. We have this wonderful, I know it's mahogany and every sort of awful, but absolutely wonderful grain on this Baker dining room table. Set of four of these uh, nice Italian leather clad chairs. A few years ago, they would have been going bananas for this set. We have four of these. I believe they're by a uh, Victorian furniture maker called Jellif. They're walnut chairs. These came from a dairy in Connecticut. We have this commode here. This is signed by Gillows, I believe. If not this one, then the other one, we'll see. One of them is signed by Gillows, which is a big English maker. We have this wonderful campaign. Leather top, 19th century secretary chest. Marketry inlaid, Dutch in marketry inlaid chairs there. Lots of chandeliers. More mahogany. This is an English set, I believe. Nice individual paint, some of them as is, but beautiful quality set, quality set of eight chairs with it. We have a pair of these. And these look sort of Italian, or possibly German. Serpentine front commodes, but as is, they came from Teaneck. Lots of pairs of mirrors, lots of bronze sconces. And before we move on, I can't miss these, Steve. There's a lot of interest in these. These sconces came from a home in Bronxville. Bag style, or if not bags, these are wonderful, nice antique ones. Usually you see the reproduction. We have a set of four of these with the urn and the foliate decoration. And below we have a pair of these with the bird. I know online they're already ramping up the bids on that. So it's nice to see that the the interest is out there. These are a pair of George Smith, beautiful, comfortable chairs. So for you decorators and you're wanting to furnish your home, there's lots of good stuff by Holly Hunt, George Smith, pair of putty form. We also have the antique stuff. For the people who like the antiques, there's Mr. Weinstein over there hiding on us in the background, not to be seen. We have a night, we have lots of mahogany. You have this wonderful Sheraton sideboard here. We have two big dining room tables. We have a triple pedestal, which is this one, and we have a four pedestal inside. The four pedestal, I believe, is Regency. Unusual to find. This is possibly, this is the Gillows commode I was lying about earlier on, but this is the Gillows commode here. Once upon a time, they'd be uh, breaking down the doors together from the same estate was this 18th century trunk. Actually very usable for stashing all the kids' gear and stuff these days. We have a whatnot shelf. We have another bronze here by Arte, patinated Art Deco style bronze. In front of it, we have an empire. Once again, not the most desirable, but a beautiful scroll arm empire sofa. Look at the carving on that. The back room, we've been so busy, we've hardly had time because we're actually uploading another internet art sale. Will, who's our uh, new person here, has been getting a great sale together of a wonderful collection of art we bought that'll be on December the 11th, online only, but he's uploading it every day of the week. So check out the site for that. Once again in the sale, we have another Steinway. Serial number 240701. It's been painted white, but the board, the soundboard, is in excellent condition. And it uh, sounds very good. So you might get a bargain there. These are sort of like, I suppose you'd call these Gibbing style chairs. We have Holly Hunt coffee tables. We have this Holly Hunt dining room table here. Once again, more carpets on the floor. We have this Fritz Hansen chair and ottoman. Very desirable. We've got go with these beautiful hide. You know, they're nearly like cubes, cow hide, but very good, very decorative. Uh, over here in the cases, we have lots and lots of art glass. One of the makers I know is Gilvie, and there's mid-century glass. I would say this is Waterford, at a guess. We have lots of Japanese and Asian bronzes. We have more sconces. We have Wedgwood. And Neely and Whitney, I'm sure, have told you all about the rest. And with that, I'm looking around to see if I've missed anything. I've, I have not, but don't forget that Tiffany lamp coming up in December. With that, I will bid you adieu and thank you and pass you on to our next appraiser. 
Welcome to our November 5th auction preview. We have several important works by African American artists in this sale, so I'd like to start by showing you the two behind me. The first here is by Ernie Barnes. Barnes is a mid 20th century painter. He was born in North Carolina and he was also a professional football player. So a lot of his work is very figurative and shows a lot of musculature, often very elongated figures. So we can see that here in this pool hall scene called Eight Ball. We believe this was painted in the mid 1960s while he was uh, living and showing in Washington DC where he had his first solo exhibi exhibition. This piece is estimated at eight to 12,000. And down below, we have a work by the Harlem Renaissance painter, Ernest Critchlow. Critchlow, a lot of Critchlow's work focuses on the social injustices, but all of it focuses on the African-American experience. So here we have a work from, the, from 1955 showing a full-figured young girl staring off into the distance, and it's called Waiting. And keep in mind, this is painted at the beginning of the civil rights movement. So the title then leaves us wondering, what is this girl waiting for? Um, so I think it's a pretty powerful painting, though quite simple overall. Uh, and this is estimated at three to 5,000. Now I'd like to show you a work by uh, an American painter Working in the 1930s and 40s at this point, this is by Louis Bosa. He was Italian born, but he worked at the Art Students League and studied under John Sloan. So you can see the influence of the social realism um, he would have encountered working with John Sloan. We have laborers looking over the New York City skyline. And actually what's interesting about this painting is it's double-sided. So if you, hopefully this won't be too shaky, but I wanna take it off the wall for a moment and show you the back because we do have oh, another piece here, an industrial landscape. Both pieces are signed, both the front and the back, down in the lower right corner. So two pieces for one money, as Ron would say, and this piece is estimated at two to three thousand dollars. So it's a very rare and unique work for the painter. And then as we move on into the 1950s, I'll show you a work by a well-known um, abstract expressionist painter, Fritz Boltmann. Boltmann did not quite re receive the recognition that a lot of his contemporaries did, uh, but still a significant abstract expressionist piece. This is done in 1957. It's called Two People, signed and titled on the back. A lot of his work is quite complex yet organized, um, and some of it does suggest figures, which is what we have in this piece here. This is estimated at 35 to 4,500. And as we move across, I want to show you a work I'm very excited to have. Uh, this is a Jules Breton oil on panel, and it may look familiar. It's a study for the harvesting of the, harvesting of the wheat in Artois. This was painted in 1856 to 1857. We know that because the final painting, a much larger work, was exhibited at the Paris Salon in 1857. There are several known studies, this being one of them. Some focus more on the figures, um, some are overall composition studies, which is what we have here. And here we have clergymen and villagers parading through the fields, hoping, hoping for a bountiful harvest ahead. This painting is estimated at 10 to 15,000. And just as we move across, I'll show you quickly, this is a Moses Sawyer. We have a half portrait of a nude girl, a lovely figure painting by the artist. And up above, we have another small child. This is by Horatio Rocha. This is out of a Teaneck, New Jersey home. And he's known for his uh, paintings of children in landscape. This one very sweet with the girl with the butterfly net and a butterfly down below captured in a glass. Also painted in the 1950s or so, estimated 1,000 to 1,500. And down below from the same estate as the Jules Breton, we have a work by Philippe de Champagne. De Champagne was a Baroque era French painter. He was a court painter to Louis XIII and also Cardinal Richelieu. Uh, but as he started to familiarize him himself with the Jansenism, he began painting very austere portraits, which is what we have here in this depiction of Madeleine Le Chazaire. This was painted in about 1664. Uh, often his portraits had figures in all black, as we have here, and you can just see the intensity in her stare. 
here. So a really striking and powerful portrait done in the mid 17th century. This is estimated at 10 to 15,000. And just while we're here, I'll show you, we do have another work by Ernie Barnes. I mentioned he was a professional football player. And here we have a, a painting of four players. It's actually of the LA Rams. So a nice figurative work. Again, you can see all the muscular definition in the legs, a lot of it quite exaggerated with their heavy stance, but also sh sort of showing movement. So a nice large painting. And this work is estimated at five to 7,000. We've had several works by Ellie Nadelman in the last few months. And here we have another bronze by the artist, a beautiful art deco figure covered in drapery, breasts exposed, ties around the ankles. This is stamped, signed, and dated 1914 down on the lower base. We do have a Roman bronze work foundry mark along a lower edge, and it's done in a black patina. Really exceptional piece. This is, uh, we're calling it after Ellie Nadelman. Unfortunately, we haven't had it authenticated, but we do think the quality is there, and it's estimated at six to 9,000. I'd like to show you another work by an African-American painter. This is by Richard Mayhew. Here we have an oil on a canvas board. And it's a landscape done in a somewhat impressionist manner. He was known for his impressionist but also expressionist landscapes. And we do believe that this is actually an earlier work where he was using a more limited palette. As he moved on into the 1970s, he became known for his much more bold and intense colors uh, and often more ab abstracted landscapes. But here we have a more straightforward landscape depicting clam diggers. So we believe it was painted in about the mid 1950s, but a really nice work nonetheless, estimated three to 5,000. And another African-American artist I'd like to point out is Daniel LaRue Johnson. We actually have five works by him in this sale. This is one of his very bright, vivid, uh, colorful shaped canvases. These were done in the 1970s after he studied in Paris. He's also known uh, mostly for his monumental large scale sculptures. There is an, another one in the same vein and then two other, other feathered uh, canvases that you should take a look at the online catalog for full images of because they're quite exceptional as well. This is estimated at 15 to 2,500. Now I'd like to show you a work by an Israeli artist, also a mid 20th century piece. And this is by Shalom Seba. This was painted in 1960. It is signed and dated down in the corner. A lot of uh, Seba's work is bordering on abstraction. Here we have an interesting mix of hard edge lines and shapes with sort of impressionist uh, colors that are blending into each other in the still life there. A really nice painting estimated at two to 3000. And one more group of paintings I want to show you are two portraits by John Hopner. These are from a Manhattan estate. The first one here is a depiction of Anne Saunders. She was the second Viscountess of Melville. And Hopner was uh, working very much in the style of Sir Joshua Reynolds in the late 18th and early 19th century. So here we have Saunders depicted in landscape. She's gazing out into the viewer. This piece actually uh, was purchased by the decedent at Christie's in 1980. We do have the original catalog pages to accompany this lot, and it's estimated at three to 5,000. Now I'd like to show you another portrait also by John Hopner from the same estate. Here we have a portrait of William James. He was an attorney uh, and later served for the Royal Navy. We have a half length portrait. The sitter is also viewing out into the distance sitting in an interior with a red drapery in the background. And this portrait is estimated at two to 3,000. We have nearly 100 pieces of art, so please do take a, a close and careful look at our online catalog, and we hope that you will join us this Sunday, November 5th. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to Clark Auctions November 5th Halloween auction preview. Um, we're going to start here with, we have many groupings of Franklin mint ingots or metals. So here is 100, the 100 greatest masterpieces. Comes in this great case, a booklet with information on each of the artists and each is, of the pieces of artwork that they have chosen. Really nice size with a gilt finish to the metal, um, all stamped, they are sterling. Um, out of a T-neck New Jersey estate, we also have another 
similar set here, another Franklin Mint. These are all locomotives. So we have some in this nice fitted case, some still in the original packaging, and this comes with another glossary of terms with a certificate of authenticity, et cetera. Um, and there are other sets. So these are just two out of the many that we have from Franklin Mint. One of many flatware services, Sterless, Sterling Wallace Grand Baroque, nice service, service for 12. Um, and it is over here we have Reed and Barton Francis the first. So this is out of a local large monastery. Bread basket, round bowl, uh, two nut dishes and a, and a single piece of flatware. Estimated at 400 to 600. Beautiful piece of silver plate. Um, this is by Elkington and Company. Great dragon or griffin forms to the base. Um, we do have replate, these should have been cups, but they're actually candle cups and bobeches, but it should have been similar etched or cut glass bowls such as the top piece. Um, but this is estimated at 600 to 900, a really beautiful example of an Elkington silver plate piece. Um, a little item that came in on one of our Walk-in Wednesday appraisal days that I quite like is a, a 19th century horn box by John o Oberset. Um, Sir Francis Drake, a nice familial crest in the center, estimated at 400 to 600. And we have a large selection of jewelry for this auction, really a beautiful grouping. And I'm going to start here with this multi-strand pearl bracelet with an 18 karat gold and turquoise clasp. I don't know if it's the same piece. I think that this is a necklace, but this is a really similar piece that is um, illustrated in this book. Um, so I'll do a, I haven't actually looked yet, but I am going to see if it's the same piece or a similar make. Um, graduated large chain necklace, really great. It does need to be cleaned, but this is also out of T-neck. Uh, we have a whole collection of these ear cuffs. These are actually 18 karat gold to F Elsa Peretti for Tiffany, estimated at 8 to 1200. Uh, three piece set with the ear cuffs again, and these are enamel and diamonds. A beautiful bracelet, hinged bracelet here. X form to the center, Miele diamonds. Beautiful three piece set. And here we have a, a baguette eternity band, really beautiful. Nice piece here. Estimated at four to six hundred. Three piece set, couldn't be nicer quality. Large central pearl with a surround of enamel and ruby cabochons. 18 karat gold, again with the ear cuffs. So a nice grouping. And this is also out of T-neck, a long 18 karat gold necklace with these little carved pendants. Beautiful, 1500 to 2000. Two piece set here. So it's gold set with sapphires and diamonds, bracelet and necklace, or actually nice toggle clasps here. You can um, put them together to make a larger, one larger chain. Um, here we have an 18 karat gold and jade bracelet, beautiful brushed finish. Um, I, could, I wasn't able to identify the maker's mark, but it is signed. Um, so a nice piece out of T-neck. A little dragon form brooch, 18 karat gold inlaid with diamond accents and little rubies to the eyes and tail wonderful quality. Three piece nine carat English gold set. Um, these were the lids to vanity jars, little familial crests here or some sort of design. Three piece set all stamped here. All the information is available online. Estimated at two to three thousand. And here's a pair of 14 karat yellow gold bracelets with diamond simulants in them. So they're not actual diamonds, but you do get the look for less of a price. Um, another four piece suite with the ear cuffs. So we have turquoise and diamonds with this beautiful ring. Really a nice looking piece with a large central cabochon. From the same estate, this grouping of five rings, little cocktail rings, amethyst, smoky quartz, nice opal set in white gold, star sapphires, which I always like, and then a little diamond, floral diamond ring. All together estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Small aquamarine six carat pendant, pear shaped with diamond surround, six to 900. From the same estate, two separate lots, but each are diamonds and baguettes or diamond accents set in platinum. So we have this nice band and also this one. 14 karat gold and di melee diamond accents look great on. This is an 18 karat gold brooch by an Italian company named Cellini. 
Uh, we have turquoise, sapphires, and diamonds. Really beautiful, kind of in tremblant, so these all move. Um, and it is fully stamped on the back. Here we have a retro or vintage 14 karat rose gold necklace. Really nice, beautifully articulated. And we have an angel skin coral necklace, single strand, nice size of the beads with little gold rondelles, estimated at 400 to 600. A Lucien Picard ladies watch, 14 karat gold, bands also 14 karat with a diamond accents, a really nice raised face to the watch. Three, four piece set here, I'm sorry. So we have 18 karat, sapphire and diamond ring, a little floral brooch, and these are really quite nice. So clearly for, for this price, you're not getting diamonds, but they're diamond simulants and really nice quality. Set in 14 karat white gold. Here we have a 32nd degree Scottish Masonic ring, center diamond, approximately 60, 60 points. Um, nice ring, estimated at six to 900. Leaf form brooch with sapphire cabochons of graduated size with little diamond accents, really nice out of T-neck. And here are two of the main pieces in this auction. We have a beautiful five point, I'm just gonna put it on my hand here, 5.94 karat diamond. It is G in color and I1 in clarity. The cut is good, good polish, good symmetry, no fluorescence, and it all does come with a full GIA report. Estimated at 15 to 25,000. It does, it just came back from GIA, but it does come with a platinum setting that has graduated baguettes on each side. And here, another from the same estate. And this one is, sorry, just take a look there. Um, this is 5.39 carats, J color, I1 clarity, good cut, good polish, good symmetry, and no fluorescence. And again, comes with a very similar setting, platinum with graduated baguettes. All the information is online with the GIA certificate. Moving on to, these are from TNEC, and this is also from TNEC. So we have this three-piece set, uh, very similar. They're actually gold-plated bracelets, but it, they are diamonds, emeralds, and rubies. So those three are one lot. One of my favorite pieces in this auction is this 18 karat Italian gold modernist, real cool emerald and diamond bracelet. Estimated at two to 3,000, I just think it's beautiful. The estate that this came from, the family were in the gem business. So these most likely came from Colombia in the 1930s. And it's not back from GIA yet, but we do have a 3.06 emerald that is getting certified at the moment. It should be back on Thursday, so if anyone is interested, you can check back on our website and I'll have updated all of that information. Um, and this is a double strand pearl necklace, beautiful diamond clasp, all the color clarity, et cetera, is available on our website, estimated eight to 1200. We have a small men's grouping here, 14 karat gold with sapphires, 18 karat with emerald and diamonds, and a three piece little stud set. And here we have a large opal cocktail ring with modernist setting, diamond accents to the surround. Really beautiful piece. Another piece out of T-neck, 18 karat gold, diamonds, turquoise, lapis. Really a beautiful piece. Some of them are, I believe some of them move. Yes, this one here. So really beautiful quality piece. 18 karat gold bracelet with diamonds. Nice piece, beautifully articulated. Heavy 14 karat gold chain. We have a multi-strand Keshi pearl necklace with a gold clasp. Mexican silver. Bib form necklace, again, beautifully articulated. Really nice estimate at 300 to 500. There we have a very heavy 14 karat gold chain bracelet. And moving on to the men's watches. Baume and Mercier, nice piece out of T-neck. Le Coultre, just the watch face, so all you need is a strap. And this is an interesting 1973 Pulsar Time computer watch. Kind of the, uh, the first Apple watch, I guess. I'm not sure what it does, but it's here, 14 karat gold. And one of the most interesting pieces in this sale is this Men's Agassiz 14 karat gold world time watch. 17 jewels, there are photographs of the movement online. A really interesting watch, should exceed our estimate of two to 3,000. Um, and we have had a fair amount of interest in it. So that's a, a piece that I'm excited to see. 
um, that is lot 300. We have a whole collection of coins in this auction. Um, $10 coins, $20 coins, $5 coins, $2.5 coins. Um, all of the information for each of these pieces is available on our website with the year, the date, etc., weights. So that's all available to you. We have this two-piece Tiffany grouping, beautiful ribbed Tiffany bracelet and this Tiffany floral brooch. Two-piece set, floral colored gems, 14 karat gold necklace and bracelet estimated at 600 to 900. Very sweet antique Tiffany ring, central blue faceted stone, floral design to the surround. It is 18 karat gold and Tiffany. I really like this piece. And one of my favorite lots in the sale, only because I really do love coral, is this lovely 18 karat gold carved coral strawberry brooch with diamond accents. Really nice quality. Came out of T-neck, estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. And here we have a platinum and 14 karat gold brooch with a lot of diamond weight to it. So this central portion with the diamonds is you are able to remove it. So it's so this whole contraption that I'm not going to take apart because I won't be able to get it back together, but it does separate. So you can wear it just as a platinum and diamond brooch or have it in this much larger foliate form surround. Estimated at three to 5,000. Another coral piece in this auction is this beautiful graduated single strand of coral beads. Beautiful carving to the clasp, estimated at four to 600. And here we have a 14 karat gold choker length necklace with beautiful panels of melee diamonds, estimated at 1500 to $2,000. And gold grouping, 14 karat gold charm bracelet and a 14 karat gold watch. A lot of gold weight to these pieces. And out of T-neck, we have many groupings of charms. So this is just one of them, a little floral basket, pearls in a basket, and this is really sweet. 14 karat gold with a star sapphire and it opens up and you can put little pictures in there. It's like a little letter or a little envelope. Really sweet all together. So this is a large central emerald cabochon with diamond and emerald surround, estimated at two to 3,000. All the information for these stones is available on our website. And we have this kind of smoky quartz grouping, gold chain, large cocktail ring, large pendant, another cocktail ring with this really interesting circular design to the mounting and pearl grouping, two very similar pearl strands, single strands. I believe they can be attached for a much long, longer piece. Two matched bracelets, this is just it unattached and here it is together. And this really nice double strand of pearl set in 15 karat gold. And this is a 14 karat gold necklace with a diamond symbolant band in the center. And then they kind of put this just gilt metal attachment on here for a necklace. And I'm going to wrap it up with this 14 karat double strand of gold beads, beautiful ribbed beads, hollow beads, but quite nice, it's attractive. And there are many more pieces available on our website or all the details are also there. And that wraps it up for our November 5th auction preview of jewelry and silver and we hope to see you there.